Hello and welcome back to the Alteryx Weekly Challenge. Me, Nick Bignall. This is challenge number 101, the search for powder. So we're now looking at resorts for snow or skiing in Colorado. We have, a, looks like a link to pull down the uh, latest uh, or historic, by the looks of it, um, data from a sensor that's uh, up in the mountains. Uh, this one happens to be a specific one. It's got an IDF 303 and it looks like we'll have to take this URL and then build that out with some other sensors and uh, change the URL to be to cover them and then work out which sensor has the highest snowfall or participation in um, or precipitation I should say <laughs> uh, in the last in last week and then anyway, look, so look this is it and then that will be the site or the the area that's got it so we've got this url here one url here which has got i think and then we've got a list of uh, 115 sensors and they've all got this unique id and so if we look at the first one it's 303 uh, which corresponds with the 303 in this URL, you can see it here, 303. So what we need to do is replace that. Uh, so first of all, I think what we need to do is break out the 303 into its own field so we can bring it into, into here. And I think the simplest way to do that is to split it on, split it to site name and then split it on this because it's in a bracket, open bracket. You know, two, uh, we run that. And that will give us here, right at the end, the site name, although it's got a closed bracket at the end. And what I'm thinking there is we simply, well, there's two ways we can do it. Just write a formula to remove it. I replace it with zero, or we could, um, we could just uh, put in another one, which then uh, close bracket on site two two columns and then that'll give us similarly this site name 21 as the site number okay so let's just select that and what, what I want to do is just bring in so the what we just want are the things we need now we're going to need at some point to work out where things are so we'll need the lat and the long uh, we'll probably need the name although we can take that from here so we'll have in here we'll just put name and then site 21 so we can get with two and the end one and that's going to be the site num and then we want let's get rid of everything else that we don't need and that long as probably one don't need to county or anything else so then we'll just be left with this this information here so that long name and site number okay so I'm thinking what we want to do is because we're going to be downloading stuff. I'm just going to sample this to the first, uh, let's say, five rows for the purposes of this so that we're not having to run all the data in for a hundred. Because if I remember, this is saying it's going to pull all the data, historic data there is for this. It's going to be a lot of data, I'm thinking. So let's see what we can do there. So the first thing we need to do is append uh, one to the other. So we can do that. Now, when we're doing a pen, you've got to always remember that this is at the bottom. So if you've got more than 16, I know we're going to cut it to five, but that will change at some point. And all it's doing is basically appending that onto each other. So we now have the URL. Now it has this 303 in here, but we want to change that for this site number. So I'm thinking we can simply do a formula and then take that URL and do a replace. So string is URL and the target is 303. And then the replacement is simply the other field. So the last field which is site number. Okay, and then that should give us a change in URL for each of them. Let's have a quick look. Okay, we've got an issue here, it was truncated. Okay, so are we not pulling in enough? 
and what is this looking at? Uh, so it's maybe we need to increase the size of that. Therefore, let's have a look. Uh, so we can do that with a select, and we can just make it. We can make it a medium, and let's put it in as. Put it in nine, 99. That's see where. See if we get that error message again. No, that's good. Okay, so now we have. Uh, this should be different for each one. Yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so see, there's a when you have more, it just cut it to that particular number of. Okay, so that do. <coughs> and we now have lang not long. Long lat and name and site. Okay, so let's now go to pulling in the data for each one. So if we go to the developer tab and we can download the data for each one. It's already picked the URL. I guess we want it as a string and let's just run that. Okay, so we have Warning, warning, warning. Cell has been embedded new lines and truncated. Okay, so, uh, right, so what I'm thinking what we can do here is break out, break out the uh, ro rows. So we can do this with regular expression or text to columns. That's columns because we can just basically take that data. So it's the download data and we can put it in slash n and we just do it to rows and that should bring it all back okay you see now we've got we've got this warning on the first row but then every other three other rows split now it looks like this has got a load of hashes in it to initial initially so it's only showing the first there's not a lot of data in there i wonder if we can put a Let's put a browse on it. See if we can we see what we're looking at. Okay, let's have a look now. See what we've got. There we go. So here's some data. Okay, so um, looks like from the from here we have so it's a row. Looks like it's a data as of March, and then we've got a date. Things missing, and then temperature. Is that right? Air temperature, by the, judging by the comma here. So we've got first comma, date, sec, between the second one is water equivalent. Third is this participation accumulation. Okay, so that's the one we're looking for in the, this, this is the one we were participation increment value. So that's how much it's obviously in the first one, there was nothing. And then temperature. So I'm assuming this is air temperature, uh, degrees f yeah okay makes 64 makes sense then okay so then if we yeah oh yeah we've got some data with actual so 0 0.0 0 0.0 in terms of it and then the next day was 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 okay so that's that so let's just break again we can use the text com but what we can do is skip skip the first let's take a sample and skip the first uh, 58 rows because it was 59 which had the uh, had had the data that starts on it yep so now we've got this in here what we can do is split this one again text columns we can split it on data column it's about what was it so it's date three plus the participation plus three that's six we'll make it six columns so number of columns six okay and then run that okay so if we go across here yeah oh no look there's another comma there so we needed more seven okay let's just check there's no more uh, yeah, participation increment inches. Oh, oh, it's this one at the end, is it? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, oh, here we go. We've got some. Right, so seven. Let's run that. Yeah, okay. I'll actually push that back up again. I don't need that there. Okay, so yeah, so we can use the total of this. Is that right? Right, so the first thing I think we need to do. Oh, okay, first thing we need to do is bring this in as the so back arm developer. Uh, we want to bring in dynamic rename. What I'll do is that will give us the ability to take. So we want to, so we don't really need any of those, but what we do want to is all of this. to download across the seven and we want to, not formula but we want to take take names for the first row of data yep so now we've got date now I suspect should have done is move this down here that we're going to have multiple dates so where so you can see before this thing we've got date in here and I suspect so I've got to see I suspect there'll be dates in here as well. It only shows the first one. <laughs> right, okay. Then um, then what we can do is filter out anything that's got date in the date. So we go to date. What's it doing now? It's pulled off these. It's, ha it's highlighted everything. How does it do that? I don't want everything highlighted. Okay. It's getting very confused, clearly. Right. So we want date. Uh, let's run this. Okay. So on the way in, we have date. Now, what we um, what we want to avoid here is where it does not equal date because then that'll just get rid of the multiple titles we're going to get because they're all going to have the title or the, the headers in there okay so if we look on the false side we've got yeah so we've got date in there these titles okay so what that means is we now have a, um, a date now is this actually a date it is a string. Okay, so let's make it a date. In fact, we can auto field this. See what it does when you do that. Okay, so what's it created? Date? Oh, it's called it a string. Oh, well, we've done the rest of them. So let's um, let's just use a. Oh, I've lost it. Select. And we can make that a date. So just date. That means we can now use a filter just to get the last seven days of date. So the last, so if we use a filter and we custom and we say date, date is. Uh, is it equal, greater, equal, greater? Must be greater, equal. Always get that the wrong way around. And then, um, so we want to work out what it is. It's, it's a be date time add, if I remember right. Date time add, and we want today's date. So you then put in date time to day and the units is minus eight days okay so that should then just give us anything in the last seven days is that right or eight days okay so that's cut down so we've got 24th to the second, so is that eight? Well, 
way. Yes, eight. So the that's the last week, isn't it? So uh, you then just accumulate. You just then sum this. Got some nulls in there. So I think if we just can we do this uh, auto. Do some decent data cleansing on that, and then on none of this, none of that. Probably lose the data field. Don't need these two. I uh, don't know if we need the site. We can keep it. So it's this participation increment inch that we want. So yeah, so use the participant increment values and we just sum that. Uh, but we need it to have zeros in it. So let's just get rid of all of that. Do place of zeros. Uh, we can also do while we're there site name and do the leading training spaces. Is it Nate? Name, yeah, name. Okay. Okay, I noticed a load of errors then. So date, warning date is not valid. Is this, this select date hash is not valid. So we've got, why have we got in the date field, we've got hashes. Would we filter it out? Uh, I think we need. We've got a load of hashes in the data, haven't we? From that, judging by that, look. Uh, yeah, all of this warning stuff. We've got all this. So anything beginning with. Let's get rid of anything beginning with a hash. Okay, so we download it, split it into. So here we need to remove anything beginning with hash. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's do that. So in, uh, actually it's in the data file. So it's, uh, we don't need to skip, oh, undo that. Delete and connect around is what we want. Uh, delete and connect around. And then what we want to do here, maybe don't want to skip. We just want to get rid of all of the hash ones. So let's get rid of this field here and we'll just filter out. Does not begin with hash from the data. Download data does not contain or does not contain, I think so, does not contain hash. Right, let's see if that is a better result. Okay, there we go. So we didn't get any of those warnings. No, no warnings there. Good. Okay, that's better. So now we have to just work out what has the... So based on the uh, site number, what has the participation increment the highest one? So let's bring in a summarize so we can so we can group together. We don't need the URL anymore, but that long name, site number, not date. Okay, so we just group all that together, um, and then we do this one here, this double at the end, and we sum it. Sum participation. Okay, so. Don't think we need to put this again the sun, we can keep the same name. Okay, so then that gives us the participation in inches for each each of these sites. Okay, so now we can uh, we want to bring in the lat long for each of the sites. We want to work out which is the largest. So let's just sort this. Do we need, yeah, let's uh, facial first, create point. We've already picked up that long. And then we want to sort and then just take the top. So sort by, uh, 
centroid, descendering, and then filter on the or just sample the first one. So first one row that will give us the top participation, precipitation even. Okay, all right. Yeah, so this is the top one of our, our little sample of five. Okay, I'll open it up to the rest in a minute, but that will take a while to run. But what we want to do is look up how close it is to these. Now we've got a polygon, so we already have something in here by the looks of it. Uh, and we can just bring the some kind of sort of the nearest um, into it. So let's uh, bring this in, and we can. So let's bring this in the tar to the target, and then bring the ski resorts in here. Oh, where are the gum? Okay, Put on that, and then uh, so we want the uh, centroid and spatial object. Yep. How many points? Oh, max. Edit on twenty. Right. How many nearest points? One. And uh, what we want is it the this is the lap long name of the site that we want the universe ski resort. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, so we've got one. So in our little sample of five, the one that had the most uh, participation of one inch is Arapahoe Ridge. Okay, so site. So that's. Basically, what we're looking at. So let's bring in a browse at the end. So we've got something to look at, and then because we we want to bring in well, just the name of the the uh, ski resort and the total. This one just this is from their example. So let's take off this sample. I think we'll just delete it and then hook it in, <coughs> and then we'll run it and see what we get. Okay, I've had to mess around a whole lot there to get that to work. It kept crashing when I was running the workflow. It was just using up so much memory on the machine, and I've only got a little laptop, and it was just not I, up to the amount of uh, uh, memory that it was trying, the RAM that it was trying to use. So I ended up um, splitting the workflow up in the end uh, to create and and putting it, creating some outputs. If I just open this container, uh, which has the the workflow in it, I used a uh, record select here to just select different ranges so I, I split it into three basically and uh, created this is a third output here but then those I created them as yxdbs and um, uh, and then closed that container and then ran this end of the the workflow connecting to the three yxdbs I'd run and ran that through so in the end uh, I got to Monarch being the ski resort, I guess in the last week. Um, right now, you know, you know, we're at the beginning of March 2020, and that has had 1.3 inches of precipitation in the last week. So there you go. Can be done. <laughs> you need a more powerful computer than I have, but it can be done. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time.